Okay, so in this problem, we are told a bat at rest sends out ultrasonic sound waves at 50 kilohertz and receives them returned from an object moving directly away from it at 30 meters per second. What is the received sound frequency? So the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. So we know we have this bat here. We are told it's at rest, so we know its velocity is 0 meters per second. We're told it's going to be emitting, right? It's sending out... Uh, waves with a frequency of 50 kilohertz. And then we also have this object here that's going to move at a velocity of 30 meters per second away. And so what we're trying to find is, assuming the bat right, is going to send out uh, the, the frequency, right? we know this object here is going to detect that frequency, and it's going to be a, a smaller value than this because it's moving away right, because of the Doppler effect. And then essentially it's going to send the frequency back, and we're trying to determine what frequency the bat is going to detect then. So the frequency is going to be interpreted by this object, and then the bat is going to reinterpret the frequency uh, from that object. So that's basically the idea of how it works. Right? It's going to be sending and then receiving them back uh, the frequency. And so the way we're going to do this is by using these two formulas in sequ uh, sequential order. So first, let me explain this. So f prime is going to be the frequency that is interpreted by the object here. And so the formula we use is this one right here where you have 1 minus the velocity of your object. So the velocity of our object is 30 meters per second. The velocity of sound, this is um, just a constant value. So the velocity of sound is 343 meters per second. So this is just a constant value. Uh, and then the frequency of the bat is going to be right whatever the frequency of our bat was that we're told. So you're able to use this formula here if you're trying to interpret the frequency, right, our object, right, the frequency that the object is going to uh, receive, uh, and then the bat is not moving. So this would be the formula you would use. The, the minus sign just indicates that we're moving away from the object. Uh, and then if, it was, if we were moving towards it, it would be uh, positive there, which should make sense because uh, if we do a minus sign here, this value is de going to de uh, decrease. And we know that if it's moving away from it, obviously the frequency that it hears is going to decrease. So that's how you know how to use the minus sign there. And so now with this information, we will have the frequency as interpreted by our object here. But what we want to do now is find the frequency that the bat is going to interpret from that, or the frequency it's going to send back. And so the way you do this is you take the frequency of your object, whatever this one is, right? So that's f prime from the last problem because that was the frequency it interpreted. Uh, and then you divide it by 1 plus the velocity of the source. Right, Our source was uh, the bat, right? So, because the bat is what we're interpreting it from. And then the, divided by the velocity of sound. And so you have this plus value here. Uh, if it was moving away from it, you use the plus value. If it was going towards it, use the minus value, which should make sense because the plus value makes this thing uh, smaller, right? If you have a bigger denominator, your uh, value right here is going to be smaller, which is what we want because we know it's moving away. So uh, the bat is going to hear or interpret or receive a smaller value. So basically, we're going to be using these two formulas, uh, and we're going to find first f prime, and then we're going to plug it back in here uh, to be able to solve this. So you can kind of see that this formula is basically just this one rewritten, except for you have the plus sign here, uh, and you're using different variables, of course, since we're actually finding it for the bat in the second one versus in the first one, we're finding it from the perspective of the object. So hopefully that makes sense. You're going to get used to these formulas and how to manipulate them to solve for these. Uh, you should be able to find them in your textbook uh, if you want a little more uh, discussion on them. Uh, but yeah, so basically it's just a matter of plugging it in and solving now. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So we have f prime equals 1 minus the velocity of our object is 30 meters per second moving away. So we have the minus sign there. The velocity of sound is 343, multiplying that by the frequency of the bat, which is 50 kilohertz. So I'm just going to leave it in kilohertz. So keep in mind uh, that when I solve this. So 30 divided by 343, 1 minus that value times 50. That'll give us 45 point, let's write it out, 45.63 or 62, we'll say 627. Uh, this is frequency, so it's in hertz. So now we have the frequency that the bat is going, or the object is going to receive. Now what we want to find is the frequency the bat is going to receive uh, based off that. So we just take our frequency here of the object that's moving, 627, uh, or 45.627, uh, 
divided by one plus the velocity of the source, right? The source is the thing that's emitting the frequency. And so in this case, it's the object now, since we're receiving it from the object. So the frequency or the velocity of the object is 30. Dividing that by the sound is 343. Let's go ahead and plug this in now. So we have one plus 30 divided by 343. So when you do this, you're gonna get 41. 0.95, uh, yeah, 41.95, and then the key mind this is kilohertz. So 41.95, you can just round it to 42 or however you'd like. 42 kilohertz. So yeah, 42 kilohertz, that's gonna go ahead and be the frequency that the bat is going to receive back. So keep in mind it's way smaller, or it's much smaller than the value uh, initially, right? It's 50 and it goes down to 48, uh, two. So about a decrease of 16%, but yeah, so you can rent this in hertz if you'd like. Keep in mind there's a thousand hertz per kilohertz. Um, and yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it in this form though, since this is what they gave us the value in. But yeah, the main takeaway from this problem is just understanding uh, the main Doppler effect formulas where if you have an object that's, like you're trying to inter interpret from an object that's not moving, a stationary object, you use this formula. And if you're trying to interpret it from an object that is moving, right, you're the stationary one, which in this case, the bat is, uh, you would use this formula. So, uh, and then obviously you change the plus or minus signs depending on whether or not it's moving towards you or away from you, right? For this one, if it's moving away, we use the minus sign uh, in order to decrease our frequency, which makes sense. And then the frequency decreases again, since it's moving away. Uh, that's why I have the plus sign to make this entire value smaller. Um, obviously it was the opposite. It would be swap, swap these, right? It was moving towards uh, but yeah, so just get used to using these formulas. And uh, yeah, so 42 kilohertz, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.